This is The Firing Line, sponsored by Bullseye Sports in Riverside, Nemesis Arms, the makers of the Vanquish Rifle, Andrew Phillips Financial Services Redlands, and Blue Dot Safes, The Firing Line. Here's your host, Philip Nathan. Hello folks, welcome to Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman, your host here on another beautiful Saturday in uh, the great state of California, Occupied California. Um, we have not made it to free America yet, but from Occupied California, we're still broadcasting here. And uh, I just love the winter time in Southern California, if you can call it winter. In studio with me today, I have two guests. One, one gentleman who knows a lot about winter is Brian from Southern California Guided Hunts, a transplant here from Nebraska. Uh, you got to be happy you didn't have 23 feet of snow to shovel to get over here today, right? Yeah, that's right. You know, but every now and then it's nice to head up to the mountain, you know, call a coyote, get a little bobcat coming in in the snow. But that's what snow's for. Snow is exactly for that. Yeah, you know, I go up when I want. I don't have to go up every single day, and I don't have to scoop snow. So that's the best part. <laughs> you know, and in California, you know, obviously we have some issues in the government side, but at least we know to keep the snow on the mountains where it belongs. So snow goes on the mountains, and everything's fine. Also in studio with me today, I have Jim Matthews. Jim Matthews from Outdoors News. Well, so uh, it's, it's good to be here. I'm really looking forward to all of your information on that. Now, Jim has a long background in the media business with outdoor writing and began writing in 1980. Um, well, before that, actually, before I, that. I actually started my business in 1980 uh, when I was working at The Sun here in San Bernardino. I actually quit and uh, started a syndicated outdoor package that's uh, been in as many as 15 of the local papers in Southern California. So very good. And we're going to get into a lot more about that coming up here. But first off, I always like to go through the calendar of events of what we have going on. So you can make sure that if you haven't found something to do on a Saturday afternoon yet, you still have time to get out there. Number one, today, the 5th and 6th is the Crossroads of the West Gun Show. So that's at Ontario Convention Center. Crossroads of the West, we gave out 24 tickets on our Facebook page. Facebook? That's right. Firing Line Radio Show on Facebook the guard promotion, um, if you like it coming forward. So I can't officially say that if you like it coming forward. So I can't officially say that, but um, you should go there and like it anyway because it's going to be a good deal. Also, January 6th through 10th, the Falcon, the guys from Falcon, Hollywood, and Voodoo, they're doing the Costa Ludus Carbine course. This is out at Prado. And this is where Chris Costa, who we had on the show last week, is going to actually be teaching some high-end techniques for working with the carbine and it's a uh, high energy lots of rounds fired great course that's the 6th through the 10th january 19th atlas firearms that's the one that i'm going to be putting on a women's beginning women's firearms course just the basics getting from i'm afraid of guns to i'm shooting the center out of a bullseye in four hours or less i'm going to be doing that over at rahagi so again you can find out more about that on the firing lines radio show book january radio show page january 21st 22nd our friend brian poor who runs premier rifle academy he's going to be doing his level one rifleman's course again now i went and took a audited the course in december we had an absolute great time i had a couple of friends that i've hunted with came out there with me and i just have to thank brian that he has helped their shooting so much so <laughs> i won't have to listen to this guy bellyache about the elk at 300 yards he missed next year we'll just be he should have his stuff squared away. So there be steaks in the freezer. There should have been, and now there will be. So it's a great course, and if you've never had had instruction on proper shooting technique, this guy was a scout sniper. He was a big game guide in Alaska, scout sniper instructor. He's still a, a SWAT sniper instructor uh, in, out of one of the L.A. cities. He knows bolt action rifles, and so it's a great, great course if you've never been shown that. And you know, oftentimes I talk about some of these courses and taking them and so forth. But the idea is, the idea is, go find out what somebody else knows. You know, Jim, you've been shooting for how many years? No, oh, I don't know. I'm 59, so I guess that would be 58 and a half years. 58 and a half. <laughs> and do you think if you spend an afternoon with somebody like Dan Carlisle? Oh, it's it has helped. Uh, well, they all give up on me after a period of time, but <laughs> but I've had great instruction over the years, and it's it's it helps everybody around me. But uh, I think I'm hopeless. They they always laugh. They, I, I had some great instruction from a shotgun shooter by the name of Nick Sisley, uh, a longtime writer, and uh, he's one of the finest shotgunners I've ever seen, and and. Um, he finally looked at me and said, um, I really think you're hopeless. 
And he said, let me teach these other guys. He said, he said, have you ever considered golf? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, uh, the ammunition companies love you, don't they? Uh, I said, yes, they do. So uh, the, the point is, when you go out there, just keep an open mind, learn the new techniques. You know, you may have been doing something one way and maybe it works great. Maybe there's another way to do it. So I think it's a great, great idea is to go out there and, and I only recommend courses with good people. So, you know, they're easy to get along with, very knowledgeable. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but, Jen. But doesn't he also, because his course kind of gets your heart racing, correct? From the pictures I've seen you doing there, there's some action shots, stuff like yeah. that moving around. I mean, coming to doing SoCal guided hunts, I mean, when you get that coyote or bob, that also benefits for when you go out hunting that you've had this little bit of training to where you can get your heart racing, figure out how to shoot under pressure because ultimately when you go out hunting, you're going to be under pressure. You're absolutely right. The heart rate's going to be up. And, and he does have some different courses where he, he makes you move, change positions. You run 100 yards and take out three more targets and move on. And, and it's designed specifically for that because – Bench practice can get you so far. Basically, bench practice is good for sighting in your gun. Yeah. You know, learning the fundamentals of trigger technique. But field practice is what makes you a good shot. And so you're right on that, Brian. That's correct. <laughs> We're always right. <laughs> correct. Okay, so uh, January 26th and 27th with Five, Ar five Arrows Tactical Training, we're going to take the Lever Action Training Course. This is a Lever Action Self-Defense Course. Now... I, I talked with Darren, who runs Five Arrows Tactical, about this a while back. I thought it was just going to be interesting, right? That'd be interesting. But if you really think about what could happen in the legal system right now, folks, with semi-automatics under fire, the next best way for home defense could very well be a lever action, 38, 57, 44 Magnum, uh, 4570 if you're in a bad neighborhood. Um, <laughs> But how else, how else could you have multiple if they make semi-autos illegal? So this is something to think about. And I think Darren's been thinking ahead on this is, you know, a, a lever action like a Henry's or a, or a Puma or one of those Marlins, even 38, 357 Magnums. Mouth Winchesters are back. Yep. Winch that's a great, a lot of firepower and a, a good way to learn how to shoot those. So we're going to take that 26th and 27th. And then on February 4th and 5th is Brian Poor's Premier Rifle Academy Course 2. If you've taken his first, you can take this. This is the advanced one that you were talking about, uh, Brian, where he, he goes from four to 800 yards and multiple locations and get your heart rate running and teaches you shooting under pressure, pick target identification, drops, windage. This is a, this is the great and one. It's all with bolt guns. Yeah. Well, well you can bring a, you, you could bring an AR, uh, tar, you know, like, but it's primarily designed for hunters. It's, it is. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a tactical course. It's mostly a hunting type course. It's a little bit of both because on that long range shooting, you really are well, talking right. some doing tactical yeah. Yeah. Um, issues and, and controlling your, your oh, scope like and your drops. But it is, and it's at Borough, Borough Canyon. So that's the 4th and 5th. And go to premierrifleacademy.com for more information on that. So that's all we're doing in the next month. How about you? You go to all those, right? I go to everything every day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, one of the other things that I've been doing, I've uh, gone out a couple times now, is I've been doing some local predator hunting. And I met this guy named Brian who runs this company called Southern California Guided Hunts, or SoCal Guided Hunts. SoCal Guided Hunts. And uh, because we don't want to put down occupied California, it just ruins the whole thing. Yeah. So Cal guided hunts, and he's been he's running a, a real neat little thing here where uh, for an entire day he'll take them out or half a day or whatever it is locally chasing coyotes, and we have a ton of coyotes locally. It's a great way for somebody who's getting started in the outdoor sports and the in the hunting to learn about calling, setting up, going out, wind. Wind, yeah, wind, everything. And, and uh, I just discovered him on Facebook. And so he's one of my Facebook friends on my Outdoor News Service Facebook page. Yep. And so uh, these guys are doing a great service here in Southern California, and it's pretty cool. I, I'm excited about meeting him today. This was fun. Yeah, well, good to meet you too, Jim. But like you said, you know, it's all about getting the fundamentals down, you know, your, your wind, your elevation. And with coyote hunting or predator hunting, period, we get quite a few of them in, you know, using calls where if you – deer hunt in southern california good luck yeah good luck trying to get one hey we're we, predator hunting we, you know we got a pretty good odds of calling you in one well you've got the the deer population i think i read at one time for d11 zone was one deer for every one and a half square miles i think we have a heck of a lot more coyotes than that yeah there's a lot yeah and and you can hunt in riverside county 
You can hunt in San Bernardino County, LA County. There's lots of different areas that you can actually take off and shoot. You don't have to drive all the way to the Sierras for that. Correct. Well, and that's the nice thing about, you know, varmint hunting is that you just need a basic California hunting license. Depending on the area that, that we go, you may or may not need an additional, you know, stamp. But other than that, I mean. Or a bobcat stamp. Yeah, you need a bobcat stamp. It'd be but, good to have one with you. Always. Yeah, always take one. Always bring a cat tag. Okay, and we're going to be right back here on Firing Line Radio Show. Uh, during the break, go to Facebook and like Outdoor News Service for Jim Matthews, like Southern California Guide and Hunts for Brian over here, and like Firing Line Radio Show for us so we can get you in on some good ideas. Um, again, this weekend, January 5th and 6th, that Ontario Gun Show is going to be packed. You wanted to be there at 9 o'clock in the morning and bring a dolly so you can haul your ammo out. That's my number one trick for you. Folks, we'll be right back after this. This is The Firing Line. This portion of The Firing Line is sponsored by Nemesis Arms, the makers of the Vanquish Rifle. And now back to your host, Philip Naiman. Hey folks, welcome back to Firing Line Radio Show. This is Philip Naiman, and again, I'm joined in here with Jim Matthews and with uh, Brian from Southern California Guided Hunts. Jim is with Outdoor News Services. Yes, no S. Service. Outdoor News Service. Not that it matters. Nobody ever looks that up on the web anyway. Well, if they did, what would the website be? Outdoornewsservice.com. Not services. Not no S on So what is it again? Outdoor. <laughs> You're messing with me now. He's messing with me. I'm helping yeah. you now. Outdo- you have to out- repeat it three or four times. Outdoor News Service. Come on, all the shooters on this audience are much brighter than that. They've got it already. Well, and if they didn't, they'd probably be over at SoCal they're, Guide they're all, they're all already checked by it on a regular basis anyway. But hey, that's why we're linked up. So if they can't find you. They can find. They can find you through my page. And what would that vice be? Vice versa. What? What, SoCal what? Guided Hunts. So, dot com. So, SoCal what? Guided the, Hunts. Guided Hunts with an S. Dot, dot com. com. How do you spell dot? Oh. All right, now I'm messing with you. So, <laughs> folks, just go out there. We've got outdoornewsservice.com and Brian over here at SoCal Guided dot com. And uh, look them up. They've got some great, great things going on there. And also, obviously, the Firing Line Radio Show Facebook page. Diane Feinstein. Oh. I know it's a new year, and we don't really want to talk about uh, ancient topics like Diane Feinstein, but she's making more news again, and she came out with her new and improved assault weapons ban, which we all got a flavor of last week. Jim, what do you think about it? Um, this is a nice family show. I can't say what I think about it and her, but uh, it's it's just more insanity from that that crazy lunatic fringe that's any specific, in Congress. Any specifics? Oh, well, one, she's hypocritical. I mean, it's okay for her to have armed guards protect her, but she doesn't think that we should be able to have f- firearms in our home. And I think she would ban them all if she had her way. She actually said that, and I have that link up on Firing Line Radio Show, where she said that Mr. and Mrs. America, turn them all in. If I had that in my power, you would do that. Okay, that's her words on on our Facebook page. You know, you talk about the gun issue being safe and have her having armed guards. How about Obama and and his crowd criticizing Wayne LaPierre of the NRA, who said the only way to stop a bad man with a gun is a good guy with a gun. And maybe we should have armed people in schools. Okay, now he was criticized all the the whole liberal press just, you know, whining and howling at the moon and gnashing of teeth about how could he ever say that. But the school that that Obama's children go to without his Secret Service details there have 11 armed guards. And you add that Secret Service detail, what, is, what are there, about another 20? It's more than Fort Knox. But, and, and I'm okay with that. I don't really mind. They should be protected, okay? They really should. But you can't take a political stance that says that, oh, what a bad idea, guns in schools, unless they're protecting my children. That, yeah. That's hypocrisy. That's, that's him level. saying my children are more important than your children. That's exactly it. And, and that, that offends me a little bit. Because uh, you know, you're just in flyover country, Jim. Or, that's right. That's right. We're, we don't count as you're much. A red, you're a red state kind of guy. Yeah. It's, uh, it's kind of sad. I mean, I think that, uh, that the whole idea of having uh, guards at schools is not a bad idea. I think uh, the NRA hit the nail on the head with this one. I'll second that. I have a better idea. I say we take our retired police officers, instead of letting them leave the service at 53, we make them high school teachers, 53 to 62. 
Man, that's a, that'd be the best run high school but I could imagine. They, they, plus, they'd be getting a, a more of a redneck education instead of this liberal education they're going to get. Can you, can you imagine if a local high school had 45 five retired police officers on staff as instructors? Well, plus there'd be a lot of kids getting whippings. I, well, I would just say that, not the whippings, but there wouldn't be a whole lot of lies that could be told and believed, right? That kind of street experience? Oh, Man, yeah. that's a beautiful thing. Uh, okay, so her, her plan came out for taxing every firearm for two hundred dollars and I, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago I thought <laughs> it's Jim's head on the microphone I thought that they were gonna try and use taxing to destroy because that's an easy thing for them to do and now our our rights and the Second Amendment is a right of ours given by God codified in the US Constitution that's the way it's written it states that we have the ability to to own these firearms against tyrannical purposes um, but to be taxed in order to exercise my right, that would fall in the same line as a poll tax. It would fall in the same line of taxing a religion. Both of those are illegal. So I really think that we need to have somebody take an avenue that you can't tax firearm ownership for the sake of taxing it because the power to tax, since this is a Supreme Court decision with Marshall, the power to tax is the power to destroy. And so I think there's, there's an angle there that we really need to explore about that and putting that, that portion to rest. Oh, that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Um, yeah, you know, there, there's, uh, there's been I'm efforts. brilliant. Just wait. Well, that's what, <laughs> that's, that's what we've heard. Yeah, we're finding that out yeah. on this show, that, that Phil is brilliant. That's, that's what you I, heard. I just thought it was a rumor, but he's actually a pretty sharp guy. And you're correct. <laughs> <laughs> that's an off-camera or off-air off joke, folks. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, hey, listeners know better than that. Um, so she came up with a whole huge list, which would make everything illegal from uh, from your Colt 1911 through a, almost any semi-automatic functioning rifle that you can think of, or shotgun. Or pistol. Yeah. Well, here's the other thing. Now, Eric Holder, um, this he wrote a brief in the Heller case, and here's what you have to realize. This is who's going to be in charge of enforcing the laws. Okay? He is absolutely lax in giving out high-powered weapons to the Mexican cartels in Fast and Furious, and there's been no prosecutions in that. But here's his idea about personal firearm ownership. He wrote this in the Heller versus DC case, which came down that individuals in the United States do have the individual right to keep and bear arms. Um, Eric Holder wrote, this is, from, uh, this is from Red Flag News. Eric Holder wrote a brief in the Heller case supporting the position that you have no right to have a working firearm in your home. In making this determination, the bill says, there shall be a rebuttal presumption that a firearm procured for use by the United States military or any law enforcement agency is not particularly suitable for sporting purposes and shall not be determined to be particularly suitable for sporting purposes solely because the firearm is suitable for use in a sporting event. In plain English, that means any firearm ever obtained by federal officers or the military is not suitable to the public. You know who has this law? Mexico has this law. There's no guns in Mexico. Mexico has this exact law that Holder says. And so the only guns in Mexico are the ones Holder sent them. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, how's that worked out? What do we have, 60,000 dead people in Laredo, Juarez? Yeah, the only people that have guns in Mexico are people that have them illegally. And and then there's a handful of other firearms that, yeah, it's it's he he's a he's a nightmare that we gave him, <laughs> yeah exactly. that we gave him. Right. he gave him we had nothing to do with it yeah now let's talk about sporting purposes what he was specifically talking about here and you that's know, not what the Second Amendment about is first thing it has nothing to do with sport absolutely but Remington 700 military military uses them all the time police right. offices so that's not available for civilians that's there's right. five million been sold to the United States public. Five million Remington 700s out there. Um, well, you know, it depends on how far back you go. If you want to talk about lever action rifle, Savage manufactured its 99 for a couple of standing armies. So that would eliminate, you know, under their definition, it would eliminate lever action rifles. 870s have been used. Pump shotguns have been 1897 used. 1897 shotgun, World yep. War I. Right, right. 870s have been used many times. 03 A3, 30 out 6. That's right. Uh, it just would, it would Mauser, just Mauser actions, the 1898 Mauser, for how many different militaries has that been their basic right. bolt rifle? I mean, it would eliminate all that. And plus, I'm sure that they would interpret that to mean if it has a similar action, it's banned. In other words, any bolt action gun would be banned. Any semi-auto gun would be banned. Any pump-action gun. I think they could even go after the lever guns because of the, you know, some of the, the lever guns that were used in military. And stuff. the cavalry used them. The oh, United States military did use lever guns at one time. That's right. 
Unbelievable. But this is their action. And, and my, my fear, my fear over all of this, I mean, I see the irrationality on their side. And once again, this is feelings over facts. Okay. We have, I just stated this, we had an interview with uh, the S. San Bernardino Sun this week. And I talked to the reporter about this. I think that there are three groups in the gun control debate. There's a largest group, 85% of the people, roughly split into two. One section says, we believe in the Second Amendment and we want the right to defend ourselves. We'll take it upon ourselves. The other large section, about 45% of the, or 40% of the population, says, we just want the killings to stop. We don't care how. Those two sections, which make up 85% of our population, their main focus is we want the murders to stop. They have two different ideas of how that happens. The third segment, which is where Eric Holder, Feinstein, Schumer, and all those other people, or Gavin Newsom, uh, they, take the, they take the political ploy of, of using crises to manage and further their political agendas. Dianne Feinstein, this bill that she's talking about, she came out and she said that this will save lives. This will stop things like Sandy Hook. She said that. Then in the same article, and here's my main thing that I am so incensed with her about. In the same article, she says she'd had this legislation written for a year. So if she had legislation that would have saved those children and she failed to bring it up because she wanted to make sure Obama got reelected and she was waiting for the right time, I find her complacent, complacent, involved, part participating in because she allowed it to happen if she felt it was truly in her in her power to stop it by this legislation she withheld it for the correct political time that she could spin out and get the most traction for it yes no True. oh yeah absolutely she's yeah. uh she's a disaster there's no doubt about that i mean and plus she's wrong and yeah. we'll be right back here on that word from jim on the firing line after this this is the firing line this portion of the firing line is sponsored by bullseye sports in riverside and now back to your host, Philip Naiman. Well, I won't back down. Folks, welcome back to Firing Line Radio Show. Uh, we just finished that last segment there, uh, lambasting Van Feinstein for claiming to have the ability to stop these massacres, yet waiting on the legislation until the right moment, like after a massacre. Um, I, I find that morally repugnant and jim you had a few few ideas of well you know I, I did quite a bit of research earlier this year after some of the other massacres that have happened in the last last year or so and a, a lot of those were huh, it's interesting you know the firearms are used in these things but they're a tool i mean timothy mcveigh used a, a truckload of fertilizer to blow up the building in oklahoma and killed more people and so it's it's not the implement 169 yeah it's not the implement. It's it's you know it's the, it's what's in somebody's heart. So basically, if you had a motto, it'd be like it's the criminals, stupid. Yeah, something. The the other thing that 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 people like Feinstein are afraid to touch because the media is implicit, you know, complicit with this, is that um, video games, movies, all of the violent stuff that that uh, young people, especially especially unstable young people, people that don't get out in the field and hunt and don't get to target shoot and don't spend any time out of doors or don't have a normal life. Um, you know, we have a lot of problems in this country today and those people see this, this violent material and they, they imitate it a lot. Um, I just did a story for Shooting Sports Retailer about this, about this stuff and virtually all of the studies that have been done, all of the scientific studies show that the, the real factor behind that, uh, behind a lot of this violence, is that these these twisted minds are fed this stuff on big screen TV, on video games, and daily in the media. Uh, I, I was talking to a guy that owns the gun store of that uh, incident in the Midwest and um, where the firearm was bought. And he said, this guy didn't send off any bells to us. And he said, you know, we work with these people all the time. And he said, yet, you know, we find out later that this guy is absolutely a crazy person you know, and he was able to disguise it. Obviously, the Sandy Hook guy shouldn't have been able to get those firearms, and his mother was trying to get him put away. Well, he stole them. Yeah, he this is them. this is a mental health thing. It, it's not about the implement. I mean, if if someone has that kind of terror in their heart, they're going to do this. And so, you know, the the politicians like Feinstein that use this to their political gain uh, just make me a little sick to my stomach. 
And um, I think I think that the the media is a little complicit in this because if we start talking about you know restricting video games and trying to remove violence from that, um, they that's a slippery slope for them because that's that's right there with the First Amendment. That's their revenue, yeah. That well, and not only is it their revenue, but, but it's also you know now we're talking about restrictions on speech. But all they focus on every time I've run into a liberal or a progressive who's adamant about something, they're getting paid by it. They are all about the money. They, they make big cries about social justice. But if they weren't being paid somehow for that, they wouldn't be there. Uh, on, a, on our Facebook page, exactly what you're talking about, this media complete. The they guys came out and they did this big commercial. The guys, a bunch of actors, half of them I've never seen before, came out and did this big, big thing about make the plan. They're talking about this assault weapons ban plan. Have you seen that commercial? No, I haven't seen it. If you go to our Facebook page, I have the clean version of it up there. And it shows each of the actors, like Chris Rock, saying, man, we don't need these assault weapons. And then it shows him in his movies using them. Shooting a police officer, I believe, was his clip. You know, Jamie Foxx out there screaming about uh, how bad these things are. And then here he is using machine guns and multiple weapons uh, did, as to Django picking people off in cold blood. You know, these guys, they are so corrupt as far as the hip of critical levels i mean it's not corrupt they're just it's massively insane how can you be screaming about one thing when they're getting paid to do it on the other yeah hand? it's just hypocrisy you know the uh, weinstein one of the producers of some of the most violent tv and i mean some of the most violent movies ever made yeah after after um, one of the previous massacres he said you know it's time for us to sit down and start talking about this among ourselves and then he went right off that to the gun control thing because you know he realized that he'd open up a can of worms here and he didn't want to talk about it anymore that's the only time i've ever seen anything in the media where they quoted him on that and then it just immediately fell away nobody wants to talk about because it it affects the money flow that's right and that's what they're about let's talk a little bit about your media group here jim um, outdoor news service. What is it that you're doing? Well, you know, I, I've been a, I've been an outdoor writer in Southern California for you know, I, thirty sorry, plus years. I, I was getting upset. I have to I have to change. Well, yeah, let's change the my, subject. For my mental yeah, let's health. change the I need subject. To quit talking about damn. Let, let's talk about varmint hunting and, and getting outdoors and doing good, good things. things. Yeah, good things. I, I like I said, I've been an outdoor writer here for thirty plus years, and uh, you know, I get to do the fun stuff every week. I write about hunting and fishing, and uh, and and you know, the outdoor sports. Unfortunately, too much of this stuff comes up with like Feinstein and whatnot. So I have to jump up on soapboxes just like you do periodically and, and try to deliver a little bit of the other side from what little space I have in the local newspapers. And a lot of times that stuff doesn't get in our local newspapers because, well, you know, that's kind of against what they believe in. You oh, know, I, I'm, I'm well aware of that. Uh, I'm, I'll be really anxious to see the story that uh, you're talking about in the sun that, that you did the interview for, how, how we're portrayed in that. Um, you know, I've worked for that paper, like I said, for over 30 years, and it's, it's always been a, kind of a sore spot with me. I'm, you know, I'm kind of a fringe guy there. I'm, I'm one of the few people that have been there for years that uh, a, lot of the, a lot of the people that work there, uh, they, I mean, one of the guys used to call me gun toter, and he was seriously afraid of me. He thought I would come in there when he did a bad edit and, you know, and just shoot him up. And, I, you know, whatever it takes, keep him in line. Yeah, that's kind of what yeah. I thought about it, too. But, uh, you know, it, it, it at some level, you know, they, they don't understand. And, you know, it's it's one of the I wrote a funny thing the other day about uh, I one of the guys who's been a, uh, at this paper a long time is a dear friend of mine. And we were out having breakfast the other day and uh, I had the, one of my quail calls that I'd been making for Christmas presents. And I took it in and I showed you're, you're also quite a woodworker. Well, I showed him. I showed him what I was doing. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. But I, I showed him what I was doing, you know. And uh, he's getting deaf like I am. And I showed him uh, one of the one of the calls. And uh, he looks at it and he looks at the the nice woodworking on it, you know. And he and uh, he says, hey, he's and his face is looking just pained and contorted. And uh, and I'm telling him that uh, you know I I sold a bunch of these and we use them all the time. And he I, he gave it back to what, me. And, what do they sound like? Yeah. Well, anyway, it was really funny. Finally, he's, he's got this pained look on his face and he said, he blurts out, he says, what'd you say that was again? And I said, it's a quail call. And he said, oh, his face relaxed. He says, I'm so glad. He says, I thought you said whale call. Can you imagine all the stuff that was going through his head thinking about us? They're so out of touch with what we do in the outdoors. He's thinking, whales. he's thinking, first off, what kind of people are buying whale calls? <laughs> what what do they do with a whale when they call one in? <laughs> we park just, it in front of Barbara yeah, Streisand's house. Just, Sen's house. Just, just such a simple thing. Man. No wonder his head looked like it was about to explode. You know, he didn't know anything about what we do. You know, it was a riot. I had a good time with him that day. I'll tell you that. A whale call. A whale call. Yeah. So I had to write about that in my column. But uh, 
Yeah, but, you know, uh, and, and like I say, I've covered this political stuff for years, and I'm, I'm like you. It's just getting to the point where, one, there's never a fact in any of this information. No, and like you said, this guy was so out of touch with it. Some of this, some well, of the writing, and this is a guy that actually knew more than the average Joe oh. uh, in the in the uh, in the media because one, he's he's read my stuff for thirty years, so he knows me, and he knows this stuff. But you know, he knows some of the. Well, let's be honest. Predator calling. We've got a great guest here talking about calling predators. That's where, let me just describe it for the folks that may not be. Put some pictures to predator, it. Yeah, predator hunters. This is where you go into the field, dressed to look like a bush, smell like a skunk, and sound like a dying rabbit. So basically you're an Occupy right. Wall Street person. Well, you know, and you think about that for a person that's not an, an outdoorsman and just doesn't get it, you know, that in itself, though, they look at you when you're dressed and doing all this stuff, they think, that's a strange bunch of people. But I could take your I could take your quote call probably call calling a coyote with it. Oh, I, I use them all the time for that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it makes a great bad ugly noise. Can you do? <laughs> yep, what, right there. I, I mean, it, folks, it just would work. just for the PETA people listening, I did not do anything to a quail to make that happen. No, no, that was no, Jim. Yeah. No, and and there was no. What what do they always put on the thing? No animals no were animals injured were in, the, yeah. in, in the recording of this. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no, that'll be later. But well, you talk about their lack of knowledge, and there's one thing uh, more to touch on the gun control. They keep talking about these bad, bad semi-automatic pistols that every time you pull a trigger, a gun goes off. Okay, this is their big complaint, and that's why semi-autos are bad, and that's why you should shoot a revolver. Well, folks, this just shows the lack of... of understanding of firearms, a revolver, let's say a 1950s police revolver that LAPD carried, the Model 19 or Model 10, 38 Special, you pick it up, you pull the trigger, it's called the double action. As you pull the trigger back, the hammer comes back and the cylinder revolves. It, ta it brings a fresh cartridge underneath the firing pin when the trigger comes all, hammer comes all the way, trigger, had it right the first time. Trigger comes all the way back, the hammer falls, the gun fires. Then, you release your finger, pull it back again, and the same thing happens. Every time you pull the trigger on the double action revolver... It's a it, semi-auto. Exactly. Yep. And so their their arguments are specious. They they Because guns are black or they're semi-auto, they think that they're bad. But these have existed for 100 years. Over 100 years for a double action revolver. Well, and, and, you know, I know your favorite varmint rifle happens to be one of those semi-automatic ugly rifles, too. Oh, yeah, it's not it ugly. Is, but well, it's no, not, it's actually it's pretty not cool. black. It's hydrocoated. You know, it's hydro dip. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not black. But it's, yeah, it's that looking can, like a bush. That You're right. It is looking like a bush. But if if you want to classify it as automatic and it being black, yeah, semi -automatic, it, yeah. It's semi-automatic, yeah. It's semi-automatic, yeah. And we're going to talk about his favorite varmint rifle coming back here with Brian from SoCal Hunts and uh, Jim Matthews. This is Philip Naiman from Firing Line Radio Show. Go to our Facebook page, Firing Line Radio Show, like it, and we've got some surprises for you, and we've got some surprises for you there. We'll be right back after this. This is The Firing Line. This portion of The Firing Line is brought to you by Andrew Phillips Financial Services Redlands and Blue Dot Safes. Now, Philip Naiman. I'm brought to you courtesy of the red wine. Hey folks, welcome back again on a wonderful Saturday afternoon here, and you're probably just leaving the Ontario Gun Show with 16 crates of uh, 223 ammo. Uh, Brian, you were talking a little bit about the, the uh, internet sales of firearms, ammunition, and so forth that you heard about this week. They have three semi-trucks of ammunition for the Ontario, the one company brought out for the Ontario Crossroads Gun Show. Three semi-trucks. I wonder if they pre-ordered it like months ago because everywhere around here, Southern California, um, <laughs> all those places there, everybody sold out of 223 ammo, nine millimeter, 40, all that stuff's gone. What about guns? You walk in there, uh, there's a, a rather large uh, international shop here in the Rancho area, and I could not believe how few things they had. Uh, I guess if you want selection and you want somebody to be able to get you something, you need to go to see Vince at Bullseye Sports because he can still wrap it up for you. But those big box stores, they're useless. Yeah, or else uh, some of the places where I picked up some of my stuff is the CaliforniaGunTrader.com. No, no, you mean Vince at Bullseye Sports. Yes, I understand, but you can pick you mean up used Vince stuff. at Bullseye Sports. He'll order for you. Okay. Check some of out. us just buy lots of lots of bullets and reload our own. Yeah. Reloading is a great thing. We're actually going to do a show coming up. Uh, we did a little bit on metallic reloading in the past, but I want to get more into it and have a master reloader from the NRA come out and bore you to tears on that one. You know, I'm not sure three semi-trucks will be enough 
That was one of the companies. That was one of the vendors. Well, but I'm just saying they'll be gone. They'll be out of ammo by noon, don't you think? On Saturday before your show, before they'll yeah. be out of ammo before the show starts. That's the way I, I started this surprised. segment. Hey, do you have fast passes to get us to the front of the line? I do. That'd be fun, you know. While everybody else is waiting in line, we get a cut to the front of the yeah. line. That's right. We gave out 24 tickets to the gun show uh, for people who liked the Facebook page, and the, the tickets are at will call. And uh, we need to edit this so we can just say won. that they're already out of ammo because those, this this show airs at one o'clock. I I'm sorry, I forget that we do some pre-recording. Yeah, I didn't. We're taken care of. So one o'clock um, is when the show came on. But your stuff's at will call, and life would be great. We had 24 people going out there. Let's talk more about predator hunting. Sitting like a vegan, dressing up like a bush, making sounds of a dead cat. There you go. Thank you, sir. Jim does not leave home without that. Yeah, I know, huh? I should have brought mine in, but it's all good. It's a one's enough. Yeah. One per studio. Yeah, so <laughs> we we wake up early morning, too. You know, we're out in the field before sun up. So there you go. That was a good one. <laughs> Then no animals were harmed in the filming of this segment. Yeah, so we wake up early morning, head out yeah. before sun's up. We sit down. Uh, we call them sets. We'll do about 30-minute sets. And I use a digital game call now. I've switched over to going electronic. Uh, got a decoy that... You get less headaches uh, that way, huh? Instead of blowing for 20 minutes, that's a long day. Yes, it can be very long. But it's nice for when I take people out. Is Ultimately, what I'm going to be doing is uh, videoing your hunt while you go out. Um, so that way you got memories of that hunt, taking you out, calling in your first coyote. And now you, you've got that for a lot of people, you know, it's all hearsay. Oh yeah. I called the dinner. I done it. Now I'd have a video for you. So that's why I want to get away from using a mouth call, but all fells, you know, I was out three days ago and electronic call battery died in the middle of a set. So I had no option, but to go mouth call. So you need to know. That's a great thing about electronics is they do fail. Yeah, right when you need it to, you know? Yeah. Well, that's hunting. It, it, things happen. Um, so somebody gets a hold of you through SoCalGuidedHunts.com. Or on SoCal Guided Hunts on Facebook. They click in, say, hey, I want to go coyote hunting. Yep. You call them up. You book the day. What's a typical day with you? Uh, day with me is $150. Uh, full day, about eight hours. I'll provide a sack-type lunch for you, drinks. Transportation. Uh, transportation, because I've got... The tags well, you're go going broke. The... Hey, it's more about me getting out and me having fun <laughs> than me making a bunch of money. You know, I want to uh, take people out and have fun. Like $150 for an eight-hour day is extremely, extremely reasonable. Extremely. I it can't. Is. I can't make one of my calls for that. You know, I don't know. I love hunting. I'm here to because that's what I like doing. I'm talking to the people out there, not not you. It is just, this is a deal, guys. If you're wondering what the next deal is, we're gonna get you. You got the blue dot saves, right? We got the Facebook passes. This is it. Jump on this one. This is a red light special. I'm telling you, and and this is the best time of year. You've got uh, January, February, March. The best times to hunt coyotes. They're extremely active when it gets cold, and they're all over the place. And every time you shoot a coyote. All right. Every time you shoot a coyote, you save 312 fawns, 1,406 rabbits, 62 coveys of quail, and uh, and that's uh, scientific data probably he's, some, he's spewing there. Probably it some endangered, endangered species too. Don't forget about the local cat and dog. You know. Well, that's right. I do. You save the little the stuffed puppies. <laughs> that one. <laughs> well, you didn't save Trying that one. Trying to get one. away. <laughs> that was too late for that one. <laughs> Yeah, everybody's pets. I mean, coyotes, think about it. They are predators. 24-7, they are hunting and eating something that was living. And uh, they're, if you've ever seen a coyote attack, they're uh, they're not exactly nice. They eat things while they're still alive. So, no, you posted up that video. Of a that big deer, of yeah. On my Facebook page, there's a big deer taken down by two coyotes, and they just, you know, they're eating them while he's still alive. They don't care. No. We had a, we had a situation at uh, Griffith Park a few years back, well, about 12 years ago. Coyote population was so large that they were coming in the daytime to the barbecues, pulling hot dogs off the grills while the barbecue's on, and the people are still there. And it wasn't until they grabbed an 18-month-old baby and drug it into the woods to eat it that finally depredation tags were issued. And that was a fun night, by the way. But they, they are. They are, uh, they are great predators. They are super, super smart. Their sense of smell, Brian, I mean, it's something that's uncanny. Yeah, we 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 really watch wind direction when we're out um speed wind speed because your scent just carries 
you know, you don't even need to wear de deodorant, you know, no, nothing like that. Don't smoke because all that stuff carries for long distances and they'll, they'll pick it up. And that's why you need to be really cautious the morning before you go out. You know, I, I don't take a shower because I don't, I don't need to smell all fruity when I go out. You know, Kyle. Hunting. What are you showering with? Well, you know, <laughs> maybe that's another show. I don't know. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. You know, is that most people, you know, they don't got to pay about... attention to wind direction. Yeah, they don't pay attention. You know, yeah, yeah, and it's huge with coyotes. And I've watched coyotes where you've walked through an area, so you're you're just your foot traffic. You're upwind of them, but they're jogging through the area. They cross where you walked, and they their head whips around, and they come back and they smell. Okay, there's there's a man over here. They can smell where your feet went through 30 minutes ago. I mean, you, they're the best bloodhounds, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I called one in uh, a week ago, and he was coming in, dead run. And he circled around and caught the wind downwind of me, just to the right of me. And he stopped, and as soon as he turned around, I I knew he was gone. I said, either I got a shot now or else I might as well just pack up my bags and move to a different set. They, they are, uh, you know, talking about, you know, from a hunting standpoint, I think coyotes are kind of like the new national big game animal i mean because they truly are they're they're an incredible game animal they're they're cagey they're fun to hunt they're there's everywhere. lots of them uh it, it's amazing and, and they're not hard they're not easy to hit oh no and and, and you know you're brian's experienced <laughs> and and i've called coyotes since i was fairly young and i got to tell you something it's one of those things that if if you're a novice, it's going to take you a while to get the hang of it. That's why going with a guy like Brian for only 150 bucks. Come on, guys, is, get it, out is there. a great learning experience. The, you'll pick up more in one trip, um, and it it'll be a lifetime deal because you'll never give it up. I mean, it's addicting. So it is. the adrenaline rush of that, like we were talking in the first segment about shooting and and learning to shoot with that adrenaline rush. Coyote, coyote hunting is a great way to do that. And you know, you think about it, the electronic call you have out there is 400. Out there is 400 something dollars, isn't it? Yeah, like three. Oh, well, okay, four hundred yeah. California tax. So, so for a day, for the day, you can't even buy the call. No, for you a can't. full day. So it's a great, great deal. I hope uh, people take advantage of that for you because I went out twice. I've had a great time. We've seen dogs. We've been all over the place and learned some new country. So it's it's great. I think you should get out there. How how many non hunters do you have listen to your show? A few, mostly. I mean, just recreational shooters. We have we have some of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me just you know just to talk to that group for a second. You know, I, I happen to live in North San Bernardino, and I call right by my house where you can't legally shoot or hunt. And, and I have a blast just calling them in and trying to photograph them. And it is a great way to learn the sport. And for people that, you know, don't care about shooting them, it's still a blast. It's fun seeing them. Because oh. you're sitting down in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing going on. What's your favorite? And here come one running. What's your favorite varmint rig? Let's get to that real quick because we mentioned it earlier. I custom built a 243 WSSM in an AR-15 platform. And so this is the, the, the bad black rifle. Yes. But it's not black. Tell it's us about it. Black. Pick it up. Tell, of course, we would never have a firearm in the studio, but if we did, and if, it, if you were holding it, what would it look like? It, uh, the, the barrel's made by Accuracy Systems International. It's all hydro dip. Shoots Custom. about a quarter minute of angle. This thing will take a 115 grain, 243 caliber bullet made by Berger and push it about 3,100 feet a second. Extremely accurate. It holds what? You can get a magazine for 10 rounds with this and off of an AR basic platform, not even the 308 size. Right? Yes. I had 10 round mags, all you're going to get. That's all you can have. But legally hunting, you can only have five round. Right. So if you're coming out with me and if you've got something like that, make sure you only have a five round. It's right. Great gun. Very, very accurate. Brian knows what he's talking about. And guys, thanks for the show. Unfortunately, we're running out of time again. Thanks uh, for having us. Had a well, great time. It's a great show. We appreciate being here. And we'll be back next week on Firing Line Radio Show. Enjoy the rest of the gun show. The Firing Line was sponsored by Bullseye Sports in Riverside. Nemesis Arms, the makers of the Vanquish Rifle. Andrew Phillips Financial Services Redlands and Blue Dot Safe.